when we begin with health. What they found at the University of Central Florida, and a professor there, a couple professors actually, uh, is that when people sneeze and cough, um, there's a, an element in the saliva that disperses and affect microcrystallizes going on in the air. These are airborne pathogens. And these are what can infect you with any kind of disease that happens to be in the person's body. So their idea was, can we thicken these and reduce a person's saliva, thus decreasing the transmission potential of airborne pathogens? And the answer is yes. Now, I remember at the Institute of Applied Biology, one person would get sick downstairs, and then they would all be sick. And they had a lot of different sterilizing processes involved. And uh, they had the blue lights around all the doors and inside. They had wands that were killing off bacteria on all the surface areas. But they didn't, I guess, understand that uh, when you sneeze, the particulate matter can go up to 30 feet. Now, that is, is at that level, it's like taking a water uh, jug and just spraying it, and you get a little mist like you do on flowers. Well, this article in Nature Scientific Reports showed that you want to thicken that up. And this was done in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. So, okay, a mask, if it is a filter, a real fine filtering mask, will still not be able to filter the size of particulate matter. And it's just a matter of physics. Just plain physics. Stop with all this childish, immature, absolutely insane idea that wearing the mask that most people wear, you're going to stop the coronavirus. That will do no such thing, and there's no science on Earth to prove it. I've looked at all the science. Let me give you an example, and I can quote, and will. I have the actual articles. I'm posting them on GaryNaw.com. As one of the scientists involved simply said, imagine that the virus is 5,000 times smaller than the masks that people are wearing to stop that. So that's like putting up a big chain link fence and expecting the mosquitoes to stay out. Well, sorry, the mosquitoes can get through those. So then anything else that can complement that is important. So here's what they did. They found out that there are certain ingredients that if you consume them could thicken up the mucus and lessen the uh, particulate because the larger the particle of saliva, the less likely it is to get through the masks unless you're wearing like an N99 mask. And that's what they found. And here they have ingredients, but there's only one ingredient that I would recommend. Some of the other ingredients like agar, cornstarch, xanathan gum, I wouldn't. But ginger I will re recommend. And in fact, here's what they say, quote, ginger reduced the amount of saliva expelled from a sneeze by more than 80% and was as effective as a mask in reducing the distance of droplets and aerosols from a sneeze. That's good. That's very good. So, just something that we didn't know. Now, zinc is something that most people don't take. They should, because it is just one of these wonderful things. Well, now there's new information showing that zinc will lower your really dangerous homocysteine marker. This is a biomarker of oxidative stress. Now, if you have an elevated homocysteine, let's say 15, 16, 17, it could double or triple your opportunity to get a heart attack or stroke. So it lowers homocysteine. Now, zinc is a macro mineral. I recommend at this time, 30 milligrams a day, unless you're a person suffering with COVID or, or has been exposed or around people, in which case I would go to 50 milligrams. Now remember, oxidative stress occurs when oxidants and antioxidants are imbalanced, resulting in an increase in reactive oxygen species, ROS. The greater the ROS production overwhelms your body's capacity to overcome their adverse effects. That results in the risk of chronic disease risk. Homocysteine is an amino acid that increases oxidative damage in the body when elevated above a normal level. 
high homocysteine levels are really dangerous. They're linked to cardiovascular disease, stroke, and Alzheimer's disease. And when you look at a meta-analysis of 18 separate studies of 1,187 participants, then you find that zinc was the modulator. And they found zinc is associated with a, a, an important acid in the body and that it can help lower the homocysteine level. Who knew? Now you do. And also, from the Institute of Systems Biology, they looked at 105 people who participated in a consumer wellness program, and what they wanted to do is see what role probiotics can have in changing the gut microbiome and helping you lose weight. And they found that indeed that was the case. So here's the takeaway message. Have probiotics. Have something that is naturally fermented in your body each day. That will be terrific for you. All right? It can help you lose weight. Also, men with anxiety, you're more likely to die of cancer. Cambridge University and their Institute of Public Health did this study. Men over 40 who are plagued with the omnipresent generalized anxiety are more than twice as likely to die of cancer than are men who do not have that kind of mental attitude where everything is stressed. Of course, you look at all the things that can stress you and you certainly understand why a lot of people are stressed. But if you can't change the circumstances that surround you, then change your surroundings. Occam's razor, cut through the fat. And what does it mean? It means that in most cases, the most obvious correct answer is the simplest. We just make everything too convoluted. So just something to think about. All right? And these findings were presented at the European College of Neuropharmacology Congress in Vienna. They looked at 15,938 Britons And they found if you're always stressed, if you're always dealing with anxiety, you are 215% more likely to die of cancer than if you had better ways of dealing with stress. Hence, exercise, stress management techniques like meditation, drumming, tapping, uh, listening to music, writing, journal writing, prayer, they all work. But just getting upset about everything carrying it with you throughout the day. Uh, not good. All right. Cholesterol drives Alzheimer's plaque formation, a new study found from the University of Virginia. By the way, cholesterol is also manufactured not just in the liver, but it's manufactured in the brain and appears to play a key role in development of Alzheimer's disease. Scientists at the University of Virginia School of Medicine found that cholesterol produced by cells called astrocytes that is required for controlling the production of amyloid beta. That's that sticky protein that builds up in the brains of patients with dementia. The protein accumulates into insoluble plaques that are a hallmark of the disease. And many efforts have been targeted to help remove those plaques. Well, we know you can remove those plaques. You can dissolve them over time. There's a lot to do on that. I will be doing a classroom on the air to help people with dementia and Alzheimer's to show you how you can do that, just like you can unclog your arteries. We've done that many times. And uh, But just be aware that cholesterol, which is often associated with clogged arteries and heart disease, it plays important roles in the healthy body. The body makes cholesterol naturally so it can produce hormones and carry out other important functions. The new discovery from the collaborators, just simply says that you better keep your cholesterol within a normal range, and otherwise uh, you can end up with those plaques in the brain, and nobody wants those. And finally, from Monash University in Australia, greenery is one of the secrets to slowing the biological aging process. So we all know being surrounded by greenery is good for the mind and soul, But can it be good for the body, too? So, planetary health researchers at 
Monash University School of Public Health and Preventive Medicine found that, yes, indeed, that is the case, and especially for women. In a world's first, they've shown a link between the amount of plant life in a person's immediate environment and slower biological aging based upon changes in the DNA methylation. So that's important. This is published in the Peer Review Journal Environmental Health Perspectives. So whenever possible, bring green into your life. Bring plants into your apartment or home. Have gardens. Go to gardens. Go, go into places where you can be around nature. That's the takeaway message.